also introduced a vital new element into the equation, heat. Whereas the squid forces out a jet stream by using muscles of its body, and the balloon similarly used elastic tension, Hero's engine, however, used heat. He was perhaps the first person to think about how the squeeze and the bang could help make the jet engine more efficient. In this steam engine, heat is used to build up pressure and force the jets of steam at speed out through the nozzles. Hero just thought of his engine as a toy. In the first century AD, this was the fashionable plaything for the Alexandrian jet set. And it wasn't until 1941 that the jet engine really took off. Designed by one of the most famous names in aviation history, Frank Whittle, this was the first successful jet aero engine. From it came a whole new generation of engines, some of which are still in operation today. Rolls-Royce then worked with Frank Whittle to develop the engine. Stanley Hooker, one of the great Rolls-Royce engineers, said of his work, he laid down the performance and aerodynamic design of the jet engine with the precision of Newton. And even today, we still use his formulae for calculation of the performance of jet engines. The basic layout of Whittle's design can be used to explain how a modern jet engine operates. It operates by taking the suck and blow stages of nature's jet engine and adding two more elements to the cycle squeeze and bang. It is by squeezing the air, mixing it with fuel and igniting it, that extra energy is produced. You could even say that it's the squeeze and bang that makes a jet engine faster than a squid. The engine can be split up into four main areas compressor, combustor, the turbine, and the exhaust. The compressor has two jobs. It sucks and squeezes, drawing air in from outside, and also compressing the air. Some of the air is forced into the combustion chamber at very high pressure.